I guess. So, three, two, one, go. Alright, what's up guys? Uh, I'm Trix, I got my pal Sativa here, and uh, this is going to be a Sonic Advance 3 run. So, uh, Sonic Advance 3 is part of, uh, it's the last installment in the Sonic Advance series, which is supposed to be like a, a series in the GBA that was supposed to be like a throwback to the classic Sonic games. Um, they're pretty cool, they all have like really tight movement and really like well designed mechanics. Uh, but this game in particular is cool because it has the uh, the team up uh, mechanic where you can partner two characters together and um, use you play as the first character and then you use the second character's partner ability. So what's really cool um, in the speedrun with that is uh, Sonic's partner ability is really fucking broken. So uh, you're gonna see me do that a lot. It's basically what makes this run interesting. So you can see I'm like I'm pressing the R button and like. Um, sort of grabbing Sonic and pulling him to me, and then um, you let go of it, and then you get like a huge speed boost, and that's Sonic's partner action. But the cool thing about it is the way the game gives you the speed boost, it actually it puts a physical dash panel under your character for a single frame, and during that one frame, um, you can actually jump off of the dash panel and get a double jump, and also get more speed out of it, so it's pretty cool. And you're going to see me doing that for the majority of this run, to just get through these levels really quickly. And uh, sometimes when you uh, hit a slope at too high of a speed, you just lose all your speed, but that's fine. That's going to happen probably quite a bit. It's one of the few, uh, well, one of the many random things in this game, actually. <laughs> kind of annoying, but, um, all right, 41 seconds on Act 1, not too bad. Um, this is one of the few 2D Sonic games that has an overworld rather than, like, a level select or whatever, so that's kind of interesting. Um, here, I have, there's a cycle I have to make here, it's pretty easy, I just want to get up to this platform before 11 seconds so I can get on, uh, get on here. The platform, even before it spawned, is already on a cycle, so, pretty easy to make it. Alright, I got the frame perfect speed boost there. Um, one of the really cool things early on is, uh, since you're using Tails with Sonic, since Tails is the only character you have unlocked at this point other than Sonic, um, for some reason, it, and normally in the Sonic Advance games, Tails has like a pretty, pretty bad speed cap on his flight, uh, but for some reason they just like took that cap off of him for this game, so you can fly really, really fast after you get a speed boost, and it's really cool. It's gonna be used for a lot of levels. It was a pretty good act, too, as well. Talk to me about the Chow Garden, baby. <laughs> Chow, Garden, uh, Chow Garden is not seen in this category, sadly. That's only in 100%. <sighs> I know, I know. Disappointing, dude. Right, I got a... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... I count how many times I fly there, and I have to be in a little bit of a rhythm so I don't uh, go too high or end up getting hit. I'm gonna get the speed shoes, and when you get speed shoes in this game, you just go ridiculously fast. Cool. So um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but um, I know I mentioned you get the uh, you get one frame to jump off of the dash panel that the game puts under you every time I do Sonic's tag action. But um, the way I'm actually doing that is with this pause buffer that you see. So since it's frame perfect, normally, you know, frame perfect tricks, especially this game is 60 FPS, so that would be really hard to hit normally. Um, but it's really easy to do if you do a quick pause buffer. You just, uh, you just gotta do the right inputs, and then you'll get it every time. Come on, frame perfect's not them. How many okay. frame perfect tricks do you do on your machine? Um, uh, not too many. I mean, you'd have to do, like, hundreds of frame-perfect tricks in this game if you wanted to not pause buffer. <laughs> I mean, good luck. You could, uh, you could definitely try. Alright, so first boss here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, first boss here. Uh, there, this guy here is called Gemeral. He's, like, he's a character from Sonic Battle. Um, I don't really remember what the story is, but, like, somehow Eggman takes him and turns him evil or something. I don't know. But, um, he is a mini-boss that you have to fight every other world. And, um, he's one of the more random parts of the run, actually. 
each time you fight him, he gets a new attack um, that he can either choose to do or not, and that new attack that he gets is usually very slow. So for the first one, there's no RNG in it, but later on when I fight him, I'm going to be definitely hoping for good RNG, because he can lose like 5 to 10 seconds if he uh, goes poorly. So this boss is really cheesable. Um, you just <clears throat> you get hit by him intentionally, and then use those invincibility frames to hit him uh, right away as soon as you can. And of course, you can just keep re-grabbing the ring to uh, hit him over and over. Alright, and that is World 1 done. Uh, world 1, in my opinion, is the most boring world in this game. Um, I think everything gets a lot more interesting, uh, starting with the second world here. So, that'll be pretty cool, hopefully. Um, this is gonna be, I think... Yeah, this is gonna be the last world where I use Tails and Sonic as the team. Um, cause later on I'm gonna be unlocking characters and just, like, swapping up my, uh, my team and stuff. Amy hype. Amy hype. Yeah, we'll be using Amy a little bit. Alright, so Sunset Hill 1 here. Um, this is a big reset point for normal runs because there's just a lot of random stuff that can go wrong. So anytime you land on a slope, uh, there's a chance... It's because of how sub-pixels work, I think. I don't really understand it, but it's, it's really annoying. Um, you can just lose all of your speed when you land on a slope sometimes. Uh, and then the other part of that is sometimes, also due to sub-pixels, you'll either land on a rail or you'll... Uh, You'll uh, go through it, and so it's usually bad to land on it. Like this rail right here, yeah, I landed on it, and then um, because Sonic like flew into my hands, I didn't really uh, stay on it for very long, but I didn't want to land in that rail that lost like probably a second and a half. But that wasn't too bad, other than at the end I kind of made some mistakes. Um, this next level, this next level is actually one of the levels that made me really want to learn this game, just because it, it looks really cool to play, if it goes well. Sunset 2, I would say, is probably one of my favorite levels now. It's fine. Alright, this is going to be a 33. It's a decent time for Sunset 2. I can't complain about that. Oh yeah, you do lose time with every pause. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to optimize recently is uh, just trying to, when I do the pause buffer for the uh, the double jump with Sonic, just trying to like pause for as little time as possible. That's something that's definitely good to keep in mind, but it can be tricky because, you know, if you don't pause long enough and you mess up your inputs, then you can die in some places, so that's bad. Alright, Sunset Hill 3 here is interesting to me just because of how much it varies from like what a normal playthrough of this level would look like, especially the slope jump here. That was really nice. I almost never get the, the slope jump without having to fly. That was really good. Ooh, that, <coughs> that was really clean, actually. Yeah. That delay, though. <laughs> Alright, so second general fight here. I said uh, every other zone you fight general. Um, for the first two zones, for some reason, they, uh... I had to be kind of careful there, because I, I lost all my rings. But for, for the first two zones, for some reason, you fight them back to back. Um, but after this point, it'll be every other zone now. And you can see he did a special attack there, where he like flew into the air for a second. That lost a little bit of time, and it's just an example of how uh, general can lose time sometimes to RNG. So, going to the Zone 2 boss now. Um, this boss is one of the trickier bosses to optimize. Uh, Eggman is like in some spinning thing that he's gonna like go over all around the walls and stuff. Um, you just wanna try to manipulate him to stay on the ground as much as possible, and then kill him when he's up in the air, because there's a very specific way that you want him to die if you want it to go quickly. So I'm counting my hits here, that was my third hit. This is the fourth. This is the fifth. I want him to come down a little bit more. Okay, six, seven, and I'm gonna wait and... All right, that was a really good fight. So the idea here, I want Eggman to die on the right side of the screen, which he did, 
then I want to be on the left side of the screen when he despawns, and I want to have this momentum that I'm going to have coming off of the slope. So that was like a perfect fight. Um, I really couldn't have done it any better than that. 40 seconds is an amazing time there. Um, so the idea there, the reason I wanted him to die on the right side of the stage, is uh, because after Eggman, um, after you break his machine or whatever, he always flies to the right side of the screen to despawn. So if he's already off screen to the right when you kill him, then he's going to despawn instantly, and it saves quite a bit of time every time you do that. So here I'm going to do. That was probably the cleanest I've ever seen you do that fight. <laughs> yeah, that went, I'm I'm really surprised that went that well. That might be the best I've ever done. I don't think I've ever gotten sub 40. So, uh, so there I just did a soft reset as soon as uh, the game saved my file. Because here I'm actually going to switch to Sonic first, and then Tails is the partner. Because Tails' is partner action. Um, rather than giving you a speed boost, it gives you a big jump, a really huge jump. And that's good for this world because this zone is like very uh, vertically based rather than horizontally, as you can see here. So I'm going to use my, my big jump right here. Should explain why your game looks so good. Why my game looks so good. Okay, well, recently I invested in a uh, a new setup for streaming and recording this game. Um, it's called uh, Game Boy Interface, which is like it's, it's all GBA though, right? Not just this. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all GBA games. So the issue with the Game Boy Player, which is what you know, normal you'd play GBA games on. Um, for some reason, it's just really, it's got really bad software, so when you play a Game Boy game on the Game Boy Player for the GameCube, um, it has a lot of input lag, and the video looks very grainy, and it's just really bad. Um, but you can actually sort of soft mod your GameCube by loading different software on an SD card, and uh, bypass a lot of that, and uh, it makes the video look much better, and it reduces input lag to what it would be on a normal Game Boy. So it's really nice. I've been uh, using that for about a month now. It was like, it wasn't like a huge difference. It was like switching cables or something. <clears throat> Going to like S Video or something. Yeah. Speaking of S Video, I also use that, so uh, <laughs> definitely helps as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a pretty big difference, TRC. Like, uh, if you actually plan on playing anything on a uh, Game Boy Player, I'd 100% recommend it. Jesus Christ, I thought I could back through that wall, I guess not. Right here I'm going to try to do some damage boosts. Alright, that one went well, this one's a little easier. And that just uh, gets me onto these platforms earlier, saves a little bit of time. This is one of the hardest parts of the level here. I want to land on this platform, and then jump off of it, and then use Tails' tag action in the air. So when you use Tails' tag action in the air, it gives you flight instead of a uh, big jump, and that's useful in a few places like there. So just a few more big jumps. Big jump. And, uh, alright, that level, the beginning was kind of sloppy, but the end went pretty well, so... Um, I have to say my favorite part of this with the game was Twinkle. Kind of oh, sure. yeah. Definitely. Twinkle Snow is definitely the best world. Alright, Zone 3 here. Um, I think this is the first level in the game that has a cycle that you really want to try to make. It loses quite a bit of time to miss it. So, I'm going to be trying to make that at the beginning here. I can't really make any mistakes, though, to get it. Okay, it looks like I got it. Here we go. So that saves a lot of time to get, so that's really nice. Uh, here, I'm gonna... Okay, I was supposed to get damage, um, so I could just fall through those enemies without uh, losing any time, but I, that's fine, as long as... Um, well, I didn't go too poorly, so... It's just bad if, like, if you get hit and then mess up getting through the enemies afterwards. Alright, here I'm gonna grab these speed shoes. Speed shoes, as long as they're in your way, they're almost always good to grab because they just give you ridiculous momentum. Alright, and I'm gonna beat this level at about a 50, which is a decent time, so I'm alright with how that went. The main thing was just trying to get the early cycle of the block at the beginning, so it's good that I got that. 
Um, so now the next boss is uh, probably, I would say, the biggest reset point in normal runs because um, one of the downfalls of this game is that there's so much RNG. In fact, that's kind of why I haven't been playing it too much lately. There's RNG where you can randomly lose your speed on slopes like I mentioned earlier, there's RNG on the general mini boss, and there's also two major points of RNG on just these normal bosses. So Eggman, uh, I guess it's supposed to be like a frog or something, um, he's going to jump into the air and when he comes back down he can choose to randomly either invert his feet or not. If he inverts his feet, you just can't hit him as much. So um, we'll have two chances to invert his feet. Okay, I did kind of mess that up so that's bad. Um, this, this one's nothing compared to the other boss, so RNG wise. Yeah, that is true. The one on the chain, it's nothing. <laughs> This one, um, you usually are only going to get like one cycle worse if you get bad RNG. Uh, there's a boss later on that he was talking about where you can lose way more time. Um, however, this one, you kind of, if you're doing, if you're going for like a really good time, you basically need perfect RNG um, to continue your run past here. It's just that you know perfect RNG is relatively common as opposed to later on where it's just it's pretty hellish. All right, so done with world three now. And um, one of the interesting things about having Sonic as the leader in your partner and your team is um, if you complete the third level in every other world as Sonic, that is how you unlock the uh, extra characters in this game. So next next zone is um, Toy Kingdom, and I'm going to intentionally not switch out my team. Even though it's faster to use Sonic as your partner, I'm going to intentionally beat the next level uh, with Sonic first because I want to unlock the character here. And I'm also, you can do the levels in any order you want, so I'm going to do Toy Kingdom 3 first, just so I can unlock the, uh, the character here, and then move on, and then not have to use Sonic first anymore, because he's usually slow, just for that one world that is, he's good. Was, uh, an interesting recovery to get back up there. I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. Alright, and that was a really good movement pass there. Kind of made up for the mistakes I made earlier. So there's going to be a general fight, like I said. Every other world in the third act, there's a general fight. Um, this one doesn't have too bad of RNG. In fact, actually, I think General Special Attack here actually saves time because it makes him not move at all. He just kind of stands still and shoots rockets. So I would I would have wanted him to do it there, uh, but he didn't, which is fine. It's it doesn't really lose that much time. So um, the game is gonna save my progress as soon as uh, it fades out of this level, and it's gonna fade into a cutscene that I'm actually gonna skip with a soft reset. And uh, so now I've just unlocked the character from this zone, and I'm going to switch to her and use her for the rest of the game because she's really fast. And that character is Amy. So um, Amy, it's not that she really has higher movement speed or anything, it's that uh, there's two main things. One, she has this uh, kind of air dash that you just saw me do, where uh, you can get instant momentum on the ground. Um, and that's really good. But the, the main thing is that her hammer... Um, when you use her hammer on springs, you get way more height and way more momentum out of it, and that's really good for a few places. So that's the main reason we unlock Amy. Even though she can't fly like Tails, she still ends up being quite a bit faster. She's needed for the skip, right? Yeah. I love that movement there. It's pretty hard, but it's really nice when it goes well. Oh my gosh, just go. I can tell you I'm gonna be best in my life. Yeah? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's good. Yeah. Movement's looking pretty good. Definitely is looking better than it was a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, so one more act uh, for this zone since we uh, act three first. And act two is the hardest act in Toy Kingdom. 
This is the most cycle-based level in the game, which means most of it is pretty easy. You know, the first few cycles are really easy to make, but then there's one cycle that saves like seven seconds or something, and it's like ridiculously hard to make. I don't even get it in my PV. So it's right after this one. I have to do a lot of movement and stuff really well to get it. Okay, so I did mess up that. There's still a chance I could make the cycle. Alright, and because subpixels messed me up there and made me lose all my speed, I didn't get the cycle. Otherwise, I might have. That's the main thing. Like I said, there's a lot of random things in this game, and the, the main reason you wouldn't make that cycle is if subpixels just decide to not be nice like they were there, sadly. But other than not making the earliest cycle, the level went really well. So now, here is the biggest point of RNG in this run. <laughs> Um, the next boss, Toy Kingdom boss, it's, uh, it's supposed to be like this jack-in-the-box thing, I guess, to fit the toy theme. Um, so basically, it has the most hits, it takes the most hits out of any boss in this game, and then every time you hit him, he, he attacks back, and, uh, you can do three attacks every time. So the first one that you see there, he always does that at the start, um, that's the jack-in-the-box. That one only takes five seconds, and you want that to happen every time, um, as pos if possible. Uh, the second attack here that he just did is the rocket. That one takes 12 seconds, so you lose, but I guess, 7 seconds every time he decides to do the rocket instead of the jack-in-the-box. And then there's also this ball and chain, which takes 10 seconds. Which, uh, so this just lost, I've already lost, let's see, 12 seconds on this boss fight, because he didn't give me jack-in-the-boxes at the start. Um, he can only give you jack-in-the-boxes for the first 7 hits, and each time you hit him, uh, he gives you less and less of a chance of giving you a jack-in-the-box. So the first three hits not being jack-in-the-boxes is actually pretty ridiculously bad RNG. Fourth hit isn't a jack-in-the-box. There's a chance I won't get any jack-in-the-boxes now, so I'm gonna lose a lot of time just to randomness on this fight. Um, which I'm not too concerned about it for, you know, this marathon run, but uh, I would definitely be really salty right now if uh, I was going for a PB attempt or something. Uh, I will say, at least he's giving me ball and chains instead of, uh... Rockets. Oh, now he just gave me a rocket. <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten any Jack in the Boxes, and I think at this point I can't get any Jack in the Boxes. So that uh, that was pretty bad. <laughs> that almost never happens. Usually, this, the average is to get two Jack in the Boxes, and then if you get like three or four, it's considered a pretty good fight. To get none is like kind of unusual, actually. So at this point, I'm just waiting. Um, I'm just, I'm like spin dashing into him and just re-grabbing my ring, waiting for this fight to be over. Probably the worst part of the game, just because it's really boring and really random. But um, there was a small optimization at the end. Like I said earlier, on the, I think the second boss, I talked about it. I want to have Eggman off screen and to the right when I kill him. Is that saves time for him despawning. Gosh. That's fine. So he's gonna despawn faster now. So a good time, just put it in perspective, a good time for this fight would be sub two minutes. Uh, so I lost about uh, about 18 seconds there just due to random stuff. <laughs> so that's uh, just a good example of how much... Yeah. A little, little bit disappointing. Um, I don't care too much right now, like I said, but if this was like a PB attempt or something, I would have been pretty... pretty mad. <laughs> Alright, but next world is Twinkle Snow. Um, that was the most of the RNG in this game over with, so normally if you get a run past there and, you know, you played pretty well and you had pretty good RNG, you'd be pretty nervous going into Twinkle Snow, because this is where the game tends to get really hard, and it's where, you know, you're mostly past all the random stuff. So you don't really have to worry about that anymore, you're just thinking about playing well, usually. So, Twinkle Snow, um, this is the first level, but in the second level, uh, second level of Twinkle Snow is the only level in the game with a major skip, and it's, it saves about 30 seconds, and it's the main reason we unlock Amy. It's probably the most interesting part of the run. Um, I do think the other levels in Twinkle Snow are pretty fun as well, though. This level has pretty nice movement. Uh, this big jump here is pretty...
annoying though, but I got really good movement throughout it, so that was good. Um, here I want to go over that the ramp. Part, huh? Is that Sativa? It definitely has a cool spark though. Yeah, for sure. Alright, 48 seconds is actually a really good time in that level, so I'm pretty happy with how that went. I uh, got over the, the ramp and the minecart at the end, so that's pretty good. Alright, so going into Twinkle Snow 2 here, um, this is the major skip, it's called Twinkle Skip, fittingly, and I'm just gonna try to not say anything, I'm just gonna try to focus so I get it. Alright, I got it. So the way that works is, um, for some reason, when you use Amy's Hammer in a Spring, like I said, it gives you way more height and acceleration. It gives you so much acceleration that you just kind of go through the walls, and then the walls are broken for the rest of the level. So it makes it so the only objects... Okay, that was weird. I did not know this was a path. <laughs> uh, I'm at the start of this uh, map now. Alright. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> That, uh, that's not that big of a time loss, I guess. It's, yeah, I'm going to Twinkle 3 now. But, um, basically, yeah, so you can pass through all the walls, but you can still walk in the water, so you just kind of walk on the water until the end of the level. Alright, that was really good movement there to get up on that rail. Getting up on that rail is pretty hard. You have to have a lot of speed. This level, um, it's easier than Twinkle 2, because you don't have to do that skip, but I would say that this level is harder to optimize play really well without losing time. You have to hit that slope, which is one of the things that's kind of hard. Um, okay, I need to hit the slope again. Can I make it up here? Oh, Jesus. Alright, that's fine. Got good sub pixels there, they could have made me lose all my speed, but they didn't, so that's fine. Alright, so uh, we got Twinkle Boss coming up. There isn't going to be a gem rule fight since there was one in the last world. Um, this boss has no randomness, which is a nice change of pace. Um, although it is pretty hard to optimize. Optimally, he would only attack once. Um, he starts attacking after the fourth hit. He has eight hits total. Um, however, uh, after after the fourth hit, he tries to attack every hit, so you just have to chain hits really quickly so he doesn't even have any time to hit you. So he's going to attack once, that's inevitable. Um, usually when I fight him, he attacks twice, so as long as he doesn't attack more than twice, it'll be a decent fight. So let's see, one, two, three, alright, he is going to attack one more time, but that's fine. I had to do a little bit of recovery there to not die. It's okay, alright, good fight. Not perfect, because he could have attacked one last time, but that was decent by my standards. Alright, and that is World 5 done. So, World 6, um, coming up, it's not really one of the harder worlds, other than the boss. The boss in the next world is the hardest boss in the game. Um, just cause it's so, like, ridiculously precise, and you just lose so much time if you don't get a good fight. But, uh, as for the levels in this world, they're, they're mostly not too bad, it's just in some places if you make a mistake you just kind of fall off the stage and die. <laughs> so it can be, it can lead to some big time losses in some places. In my PV, um, this is actually the only death in the run, where uh, I died right at the beginning here, I just fell off the rail. <laughs> so uh, luckily that didn't happen there, hopefully I won't die anywhere else either. And then we kind of gross if you PB with that disgusting jack in my box. 
I don't think I, this run's gonna PB with that bad RNG. Although that was a super clean level, so get that going for me. I really like the look on that level. Yeah, this level, these levels look pretty cool. I did get good sub pixels there. That's fine, whatever. Alright, so Act 3 coming up I would say is the hardest level in this zone. Um, it's just... I don't know, it's kind of a theme for this world. It's kind of easy to not make mistakes uh, in most places, but if you do make mistakes, you tend to lose a lot of time. This level, um, or this zone, has a lot of different routes that you don't really see, because uh, obviously I'm only going through the fastest one. But if you accidentally go on to any of the other routes, like if you fall off, or if you accidentally hit a wrong gravity turn, uh, then you're kind of stuck on that route, and you can lose like 20 to 30 seconds really easily. Especially on this stage, it's super easy to make a mistake like that. Mostly right here, I gotta make sure... Alright, I wanted to bounce off of that ceiling. You're not supposed to bounce off of that ceiling, you're supposed to just, uh... Land on it, and then it switches the gravity around, but if you hold R and A, it'll, uh... Alright, well I, <laughs> I did just die there, but luckily there's a checkpoint right before it, so that's not a very costly death. It was a little bit silly though, I was trying to do a recovery and I just didn't make it. But that's fine. As long as I don't lose all my lives, it doesn't really matter too much um, for this stage. A lot of the places where you would die in this stage, there's checkpoints right there, so... So, I'm gonna be taking a very unintended route here by using Sonic's uh, double jump glitch. And then this is uh, one of the worst general fights. Um, he can choose to shoot rockets at you, like, like he did there. So, okay, for one, if uh, you have a lot of rings and you get hit, then you uh, the game lags quite a bit. Um, but also, the rocket attack that he did, just uh, it loses like three and a half seconds or something. And he can do it multiple times, so it can be pretty annoying. Alright, 143 isn't too bad of a time. I wish I didn't die, but it's not that big of a deal. So this boss, I would say, is definitely the hardest part of the game, normally. Um, like I said earlier, it's definitely the most precise boss. I would say, honestly, this is the most frustrating boss to me, even though there's nothing random about it. Um, just because it's so, like, ridiculous to hit it well. Maybe Sativa can try to explain what's going on here as I, uh, try to not mess it up. Uh, I'm gonna see what boss it is. It's the chain boss, right? It's the oh no, shoots. it's the bounce the balls back. Okay, so basically the, the, uh, the boss shoots these blue balls, and he has to hit them back. Uh, it's like pinball almost, or something. There's definitely RNG in this, by the way. Impossible to not mess it up, so... 
Alright, but this fight is actually not going too badly. If that one hits, oh, that was a good fight. 44 seconds is a pretty good time there. There was... I did mess up pretty early on, but I had pretty, go, pretty good in provision, so... Um, best I've gotten was like a 41 there, so 44 seconds is pretty nice. And I have no idea why Sonic's jumping like that. He's really excited, okay? Alright, so only one world left. Chaos Angel is by far my favorite world because it just has such cool movement all the way through and a few really cool tricks as well. Especially on the third stage. I think uh, that's a fan favorite for this game. Uh, next world actually is also one of the main reasons we unlock Amy. I'll explain more about that later though. Alright, so there's a cycle I want to make right at the beginning of this level have pretty good movement to get there, though. Alright, I made it. Uh, I did have to go back to hit the dash panel, but I got through the block. That's all that really matters. So, multiple times in this zone, you're going to see me uh, hammer springs to get more height out of them, like there and there. And that saves quite a bit of time. use Amy's area dot, dot dash. I couldn't decide if I want to say dodge or dash. <laughs> um, I want to use that a little bit earlier there. Here I get hit intentionally because you don't want to be running too fast through here. You gotta be going slow so you can land on that platform and hit that uh, spring with your hammer. Is Amy confirmed for Smash 4 HD? I hope so. <laughs> This is the scariest part of this level. Um, these platforms are very small and you can easily fall off and die. Alright, 127 is a pretty good time there, so I'm happy with how that went. I would say, um... Chaos 2 is probably a little harder than that stage. Also, if you know the layouts of the levels, it's got some pretty interesting skips as well. Or just a pretty interesting route here. Pretty hard to make it past those spikes. Actually, I don't even think you can see the spikes because I, <laughs> I get through there before they even came up. That's fine. That's a little bit sloppy, but it doesn't really matter. All right. That damage boost can be pretty scary. If you accidentally do the damage boost the opposite direction, then you fall all the way down to the bottom route and you just lose like a ton of time. Like over 30 seconds for sure. So you wanna make sure that doesn't happen. I don't I used to not even know like how that happened. I still am not totally sure. It seems like it's just based on how you're facing, but it's not there's other variables I don't really understand fully. Okay, I'm gonna have to air dash back onto here. I'll just wait for this block. I'm a little bit safe about that. Okay, so that's not good. <laughs> Did not want to fall down there. Fall, um, we're gonna have to take the bottom route now. This bottom route doesn't lose as much time as they usually do, so it's not like a total disaster. Um, like I think I'm already... Oh wait, okay, there is this part as well. Alright, well this loses a little bit of time, but it's fine. Jesus, dude. Alright, now we're back in the normal route. Um, here, okay, that was really good. Subpixels can totally mess you up there. They were good to me, and, uh, okay. I hit those spikes. I don't know if I agree with that, but, uh, really the game thinks I hit the spikes. Alright, well, that's fine. That could have gone worse. Uh, and then here, as soon as this level is saved, I'm gonna switch characters for the last time in this run.
because the other, the second main reason we unlock Amy, the first one was for Twinkle Skip, but for uh, this next level, this this next level has the only auto scrollers in the game. There is three of them, and uh, with this very specific um, character combination, you can actually skip every auto scroller in this stage. Um, so for some reason, when you partner up Tails with Amy, his flying just gets way more height. And I really don't know why they coded it like that, but uh, because they did, you can skip all the auto scrollers in this stage. And uh, <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to uh, get quite that much speed there. I was supposed to land on those spikes a little ways back, so uh, I'm gonna have to try that again. Okay, <laughs> that time I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but that time I got a frame perfect trick to give me way too much speed. That is an IL strat. That is not safe for runs. Okay, I'm gonna land right here. Get some invincibility to jump off of those spikes. Alright, Amy's tag action just gives you an even, even bigger jump than uh, the one Tails gives you. This level is like <clears throat> kind of boring because of all the just straight up flying, but I understand that it is super fucking technical too. Yeah, a little bit. I uh, messed up my flying there, so <laughs> I soft reset because I was going to get a game over, so it's faster to just do it this way. Oh boy. Oh. Here we go again. <laughs> yeah, this level... I don't know. I feel like... I always practice it and I feel like I understand it, and then I still, I still mess it up in runs, so... Jesus! <laughs> the frame perfect thing like is killing me. Clipping on the edge of the spikes like that just seems so jank, so... Yeah, it is a little bit. There's only one pixel that you have to land on them. And you have to be moving... you have to be moving downwards on them. If you move upwards, then you get fucked for some reason. You just get hit by the spikes and fall off. I don't really know why. I don't know why you can even stand there. It's so weird. Alright, made it that time. And this is the part that you can't skip without Tails and Amy specifically, otherwise Tails just does not get enough height. That was really uh, interesting. <laughs> they probably should have killed me again. Um, somehow I landed on the one pixel of the spikes before the spikes came up. I just had to guess like what pixel to land on. <laughs> uh, so, alright. Yeah, all according to plan. That level went really, really well. I'm very proud of that. Gonna fix the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this marathon was going a little too well. Figured I'd uh, you know, mess up my run a little bit, help these guys out. Shit it up a little bit. Yeah. All right. So this boss, that's bullshit. Just, just saying, just getting that out there. That's bullshit. <laughs> um, this boss can randomly. Oh, okay. Just, yep. Keep this doing that. Fucking boss, dude. This, this is. Probably one of the worst bosses. In, well, not probably. It's definitely one of the worst bosses in the game. So he can just randomly turn around. There's no visual cue. Um, there's no consistency. It's completely random. And yeah, you can just get fucked and die. Um, there was nothing I could have done about that. I threw my hammer out to hit him. There was no visual cue that he was going to turn around and kill me. There's literally nothing I could have done. So uh, thanks, man. <laughs> this boss, though. Now, oh, after the fourth hit, he attacks after every hit. Just wanted to not turn around like right before he hits me, or right before I hit him. <laughs> That's. And he also jumps randomly, which loses time. Boss RNG in this game. Boss RNG in this game is the the only reason I don't still run this game. I ran it for. Well, I only really ran this game for about a month and a half. Um, but I didn't really stick with it too long. I do really like it. This is one of my favorite speedruns for sure, but there's just too much RNG for me to really want to take this game super seriously. The wild part is I've actually seen you, like, crush that boss, too, with, like, no RNG. 
Just like yeah. yeah. If he gives you good RNG, <coughs> then it's it's easy peasy. Like it's not supposed to be a hard fight. It's just <laughs> you can literally just decide that your run's gonna die there, and then it dies there. Yeah. So. Stub. It, like it doesn't even happen that often, but when it does, woo lad. All right, so uh, that was the boss of the final zone, but now there is another mini boss and then the final boss. So this mini boss is the last general fight. This is the one that has the most RNG in the game. He has like three different attacks that he can choose to do here. Um, this missile one is the second slowest, um, and he keeps doing it, so that's pretty bad. But uh, he's dead now, so that, that could have been worse. There was one attack that was slower that he didn't do at all, so I'm not going to complain about that too much. It is another annoying part of the uh, point of RNG. And then this boss also is random. Um, he's gonna, he has two big hands that he's gonna like bring down and try to kill you with. He takes up the platforms below you. Uh, you really don't want him to take down the two middle platforms. Any other combination is fine, but if he takes out the two middle platforms, then it loses quite a bit of time. Time's coming up here. Yeah. yeah, time is coming up here. Right, four hits after the eighth hit, so I'll, I'll count my hits and then. Well, it's a little bit after the eighth hit, but. Alright, five. Six. Um, just gonna. Alright, that was time. <laughs> that was also really close, I almost died there. That was a 46 04. Alright, that's not too bad given uh, that last stage and how that went. But uh, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, do you have any last words you'd like to say, or is that you? Uh, no, I think that's it. Thanks for All right, cool. having the run. Make sure you follow the tricks. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you want to see more really bad Sonic Advance 2 runs, go ahead. Actually, I usually do Yoshi's Island, but um, I might do a little more of this game. I kind of want to get a little bit better for PB. But... And the SM64. Boy, no, no, definitely not SM64. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah, play that game yes. anymore. All the words I had to say, they don't mean nothing to you. What the hell is on the way? There is a nothing better. All we had to do is touch. There was the best chance I could.